Alright guys, this is going to be my first recipe from this book by that old goofball, Michael Dawson. Uh, TBH, I just got the book recently even though it came out a couple years ago. A little slow on the uptake, but you know what? Better late than never. This is what we're going to do today. Sudkreutz? Sudkreutz pills? I would say, maybe, I don't know. Um, it's basically a German malt, lager yeast, and uh, New Zealand hops. Now, I actually was going to make some type of New Zealand pills this winter. It was on my to-do list. So, this one will fit the bill. Now, he has your choice of Motueka or Pacifica. New Zealand hops, maybe labeled as Pacific Hollertau, or a mix of both. Now I did not see Pacifica. I did see this, which is also a New Zealand hop. So I will figure out some combination of that to uh, approximate what he has for the additions. I think they're mostly uh, in the, I, I'll have to look, uh, I won't comment on it. And then, as often has been happening, our good friends at Imperial are sort of an uh, accidental sponsor of this program, and I appreciate that. Uh, get it via Chop and Brew, and I have always liked the yeast when I've used it, so I'm going to make a starter just because it's a lager, and it'll be fermenting cooler. I think that's uh, better safe than sorry, even though it might be okay just to pitch it. Got the mash going, 149, and I will get my additional water heating up and get this baby rolling. Just want to do a little shout out to Imperial Yeast. I just made this yeast starter a little over an hour ago, and it is a very fresh batch, but this thing is already showing active signs of fermentation, so. Nice. So in the book, he has calling for uh, different hop additions, a half ounce at 40 minutes and a half ounce at 20, but I think that that Pacifica hop that I didn't find is lower alpha acid because he's saying that the Motueka and that one are about the same. Um, and you can use either one, but this one I've got is like three times or so more potent. So I don't want to make this beer more bitter than I need to. So I think what I just showed you, the Pacific Jade, I think I'm just going to dump it in like later on in the boil. It won't be uh, exactly according to the recipe, but I also don't want it to become more bitter than it needs to be for this type of beer. But yeah, we're... Got about 15 minutes left in the boil, and then we'll cool it down. All right, so I am going to, I, it's been an hour. I just uh, turned off the burner. I'm just gonna do a little bit of a hop stand here, which is not what Mr. Dawson is suggesting for this recipe. I have a quarter ounce of the Motueka left. But like I said, uh, this will give me a little extra hop flavor and aroma, and I will not get as much bitterness out of it. So I'll just let it sit here for maybe 10 minutes and then chill it down and pitch the yeast. All right, folks, this is the keg of Sudkreutz pills, which actually has been on tap for maybe like a month, and I've been drinking it. And coincidentally, it's just getting clear. However, I believe it has some diacetyl, which I always do a rest, and I also always do a lot of yeast, healthy yeast, make a starter, blah, blah, blah. So I'm not really sure how it got produced, why it got produced. Maybe different yeast strains also are more likely to uh, 
do it. But anyway, what I'm going to do is an experiment. I'm going to see if I can remove that flavor or diminish it by making a yeast starter. So, here we are again. That's going. Snow bath ready. What I'm going to do is take um, some of this. This is a quart jar, so this is a ton of yeast. I don't know how much I'll take of it. Um, you know, how much would be in a pack of yeast to begin with that you would buy. Uh, maybe a you know, tablespoon or so or something. I'll figure it out. But uh, then this keg will warm up a little bit throughout the day. And then I'm going to put the stir plate, the, the flask here on the stir plate. And when it is hopefully, you know, in a few hours, uh, croisoning is what they say. When it's uh, actively fermenting, that's when you add it to the keg that has the diacetyl. And then uh, this yeast is supposed to scrub it up. So we'll see if this whole thing actually ends up working and makes the beer taste better. I'll probably include this video and you'll be seeing it. If it doesn't do anything and just makes it cloudy again until the yeast gets pulled out, then I don't know. But here's the other thing. I was just reading today. It's funny that after all these years, I'm just learning this now. But um, you really are supposed to be pulling these loggers up for the diacetyl rest when it's like 8 to 10 points is what I was seeing before Final Gravity. Now, I don't usually take readings. I usually just kind of eyeball it. And when it's starting to slow down, I bring it up and it almost always works out okay. But now I'm wondering if over the years, when I have had a little bit of this flavor, if I've waited too long to bring it up. And so I've got one going right now. I made it yesterday. So I think maybe like in a day or two, I'll actually take a reading and see where it's at. And uh, maybe try to stay on top of stuff a little bit better like that. Because uh, I got another lager on tap right now that doesn't have the flavor. And most of mine in the recent years haven't. But maybe sometimes I'm waiting too long. So anyway, we're going to see uh, what happens here. And I'll report back. So I made this two and a half hours ago. I'm not surprised that it has taken off like it has because it had a decent amount of yeast. But I'm gonna call that active, it's supposed to be when it's actively fermenting and ready to go. So basically I'm just gonna take this lid out. I'm not gonna film it because um, I need, you know, to be careful. But uh, I'm just going to, yeah, take this lid out, swirl this up one final time, and pour it in there, and then we'll see if it improves. So, a quick update on the attempt to save this beer. I added that yeast on January 2nd. Yesterday was January 5th. And I decided, all right, let's see. Uh, how it is and I took the lid off and I wasn't smelling any of that character which I definitely was smelling before and I sanitized the wine thief took a sample tasted it what do you know it seems to be gone at least at this point so what I'm gonna do today is bring the keg back downstairs get it in the fridge put it on the gas uh, make sure I purge the headspace quite a bit because there's probably two and a half to three gallons in there so there's more head space but uh, get it on the gas and then in another few days get it on the tap line but then I'll probably have to let it sit for some time to see if it'll get clear again it had been clear and now it's probably won't be but in this sense this beer is getting more of a true lager treatment than most of my lagers so uh, but so far so good and so the thing after this clip will probably be official tasting Hey everybody, I just want to do a quick update on the experiment to remove the diacetyl, the diacetyl. It worked, okay? I was very pleased and uh, pleasantly surprised. I didn't know if it worked, but I thought I'd give it a try. I added the yeast. I let it sit for a couple of days. Uh, of course, there was some 
act of uh, off-gassing of CO2 from the carbonated beer, maybe also adding this uh, fermenting yeast. So I think the first night I just pulled the pin thing out and just turned it so it just stayed open because it was just gassing. And then I, whenever I'd walk by, I'd release the pressure. Did that for a couple of days. I let it sit there for maybe two or three days. I was kind of afraid to even take the top off and try it. But at some point I thought, well, I better give it a shot. So I took the top off. Put my nose in there and I thought, oh, I don't smell it. Because uh, you could always smell it right away. I got a wine thief, took a sample out, and you can't taste it. Um, so that was several weeks ago now. The beer is finally getting clear again. It had just gotten clear. And then I added all this yeast in there so that it wasn't very clear. Um, it's tasting very nice. Got down to 1.007, so it is nice and crisp and dry. It's so much better. I'm so glad that I um, was able to fix it. But going forward, I'm going to try even harder to not ever have it produced. I do think that over the years, I have had it produced, which could either be me bringing it up for the diacetyl rest too late, when the fermentation is basically almost done, or maybe in some cases not having enough yeast even though I always make starters uh, a lot of times I wash my yeast so then I have a lot of yeast and then I make a starter from that so I already have like this really surplus amount of yeast so maybe that's why I don't get it that often but maybe if I make a kind of an average starter from a just a regular uh, new pack of something maybe it's not quite enough to do the fermentation without producing that compound but at any rate, this beer is fixed. I'm going to bring some to Michael Dawson, hopefully in a couple of days, and we're going to try to do this video. I'm going to drop it off. We're going to try to do a video tasting. I hope he likes it. I'm very happy with this beer. The New Zealand hops do give it a little bit of a unique character, but maybe we can get in on that in the video tasting. All right, so we'll... we'll just, I love the callback to six years ago today when we were doing this exact same thing. Yeah, let me bring that up on my screen real quick. I don't know if you guys can see that, but six years ago, on January 23rd, 2015, Michael Lawson and I were drinking a bunch of Hell's Lager beer. And that was a beautiful, beautiful moment. And now, here we are doing it again. We can't be yeah. stopped. The more the more things change, the more they stay the same. I guess we can't lot, we can't really be in person doing this right now. But you know, a lot has changed in the last uh, four to six years. Let's put it that way. My God! But here we are. So we are drinking the. Now you maybe said it a little different than I have been saying it. How do you say this name? Of this Sudkreuz. Okay. Well, that's what I think I've been saying. I think you've been saying that, too. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, virtual cheers. Here we are. Tink. I looked up Motueka, and it said it was a... Basically, it just said lime. Lime. Zippy lime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Now, you had something Pacific. What was it? Yeah, so when I did this recipe originally, way back when, um, I used a mix of Motueka and Pacifica. Pacifica. Which, yeah, Pacifica. Not the Chrysler Pacifica, but the New Zealand hop, okay. um, which has some Hollertau parentage. Um, and it's, it's, I think I was texting you right before we hopped on my call, it's pretty mild. Okay. For a uh, for Southern Hemisphere hop, it's, it's, it's a little more noble-esque. The Pacific Jade I looked up quick and it said things like black pepper, spiciness. Mm -hmm. uh, so and now much higher alpha too. Now let me look at how I put them in. 0.75 ounce Motueka, 60 minutes, one ounce Pacific Jade, 13% alpha acid at the end, and then I threw in the remainder 0.25 uh, Motueka, and I. Did not know like how long I would have let it sit in there, but if I didn't make a note that it was a hop stand, I would have just added it at the end and then started to um, get to the cooling down process. Sure. Um, so, do you think you get 
some of the li liminess from the motueka from the bittering charge or also the tiny bit at the end or is that also just tied in with the pacific jade you think it could be both possibly um i, I am getting it it's it's subtle but it's there it's it's um almost kind of shandy like um shandy it's definitely like. an all ball beer i think it's, it's got a, that nice nice body and heft yeah now, um it, it's gotten a little bit more clear i brought him up to speed on the whole thing about adding the yeast starter getting the diet diacetyl, diacetyl, you know, tomato, tomato, uh, removed. And then it was not clear for a while, but now it's getting clear again, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, now, do you agree that you believe that there's that compound is not in this beer? Are you getting any of that? I'm not tasting it at all, and your story is wild. Um, it, uh, you know, it, it, it makes sense. Uh, on paper, but yeah, it's this is the proof, I guess. The, um, that the yeah. fermenting actively fermenting yeast would would absorb it, or or break it down. Yeah, break it down, reuptake it. Where where else would it have gone if it was there before? You know, that's that's not the sort of thing that should condition out. Yeah, I guess like, then it wasn't. So I didn't tell you, but I had it on tap for. Maybe a month. Uh, I can look. Eleven twenty. You did mention that you just you got to the point where you were you didn't want to drink it with that that level of diacetyl in it, and, and desperate times call for desperate measures, right? Yeah, I guess it was twelve oh six when it got kegged, and it probably was on tap shortly after that. Maybe it was two or three weeks. I know that it had gotten clear. It took a little while to get clear, so maybe it was a uh, end of December. I mean, I could look up the dates, but. Um, I just finally uh, was able to clarify, I think, what that flavor was. And then I thought, well, can you remove it? And you're right, it was not conditioning out. That was sort of what I hoped it might do. And it was not doing that. It was still lingering around. So that's when I did this croisoning thing. So you saw what I did. And if you end up with that character in a beer and you want to try to get rid of it, it does work. It did work for me. This is a beer where if it was still around, like you would, you would definitely notice it, right? I think so. Yeah, and it's. I mean, Chip had this beer with the butter flavor. He has not been able to have the beer yet since it's been fixed. But I mean, he will definitely. I think he and I are maybe a couple of the only ones who um, had it, you know, pre and post. So he'll be able to, to try that. Um, it got down to one point zero zero seven. Start at 10.45, 9.5 pounds Wireman German Pills, 0.5 Wireman Carafoam. I mean, it was a ba basically the main kind of difference of this and just like a uh, German Pills or Hellas is it's just got this different hop, I guess, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that, was, that was kind of my original idea behind it. It's just like a bog standard northern style German pills, okay. uh, same hop schedule I'd used for other recipes, and just, yeah, put put some New Zealand hops in it instead of German or Czech. Now there's an article that somebody sent me that I never did read because I then I found your, your recipe, and I'm like, oh, I have an article on New Zealand pills in BYO or something that somebody sent me, and I... Uh, was something I was actually going to maybe try this winter was to make a Pills blogger beer with uh, New Zealand hops, but I now I've just done it, done it from the mash maker. And yeah, as, far, as far as you know, this book is out of print, but are there? I know recently, uh, even like as recent as a few weeks ago, some remaining copies were discovered. Is, do you have any awareness, or is that just all up to the growler if they? I think I think they may still have some copies on hand. I uh, I went in shortly before the holidays and signed some additional copies for their their web shop. So oh. they they might have some on hand. And where would a person go to try to get one? You think? Oh man, uh, you're putting me on the spot. I'm, I'm oh. 
<laughs> Sorry. Let me, let me find out for you, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll email it. You can put it in. The, I can in the, put a note in the bottom of the show description, yeah. and you can check it out. Um, yeah, I think the beer dabbler store if that's operating right now, but I'll 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 find out and let you know. Okay. Well, anyway, this beer basically eventually came out like I would have hoped. Um, you know, it is pretty dry and crisp, and it does have a little extra unique character from the New Zealand hops. I've used a handful of different New Zealand hops now. I made a couple of New Zealand IPAs, and uh, I suppose a person could start honing in on the favorite kind of ones. Um, I'm just going to ask you what your favorite is, Don. Oh, goodness. Uh, so I've used Wakatu, Green Bullet, Waimea. I think I did like the Waimea, actually. Um, yeah. Sounded like Hawaii. Uh, isn't that, wasn't that where what? There's a Waimea. Pacific Jade, Walk to Motueka Pacific Jade. That was, um, a New Zealand pale ale I made. Uh, what else do I got? My New Zealand IPA, the first one I made, um, Pacific Jade, Wakatu, Motueka, Pacific Jade. Okay, so those are the ones that I've used most. Um, okay. But I do think, but then I made a Kavike New Zealand Pale Ale, and then that's when I had the uh, Wakatu, Green Bullet, and Waimea, which was two ones that I had never used. So I guess I can't really say. I think I remember, so the... There was a hop stand of two ounces of Green Bullet and two ounces of Waimea, and that beer had uh, kind of a, you know, I think a lot of interesting character, but it also was this Kvike yeast that gives you some orange character too, so not the best, like, straight-up experiment, but what about yourself? Is there particular ones? I mean, do you like the uh, Motueka? I like Motueka a lot. Um... Yeah, I, I am curious. One of the first New Zealand hops I ever brewed with was Pacific Gem. Um, mm. And I remember it as being like very black currenty and kind of rugged. Uh, I'd be curious to go back and try that in like a Saison or maybe a Bitter or something like that. Okay. Well, I think uh, that's probably good for this beer. I uh, like this a lot, Don. It's, it's super crushable. Yeah, I'm. I'm very happy with it. I mean, I was I went from being somewhat unhappy to being especially happy with it. I mean, it is clean, and now that it doesn't have the diacetyl, there's no other off flavors, and uh, it's pretty dry. And uh, yeah, it came out nice. So thanks for the recipe and the idea. Thanks for brewing it. And we will get to the next mash maker beer and uh, you'll have to wait maybe a week or something for that video but we're gonna drink it right now so thanks for joining me and you'll be joining me in a couple minutes and uh, catch you later